Hi guys. While I haven't had the time lately to do another film shooting video, I'm going to take the time here and make a short video uh, just showing off my setup, some of the gear I have, some of the film I use. Um, while I don't want to overemphasize gear, it is an important facet uh, of photography. And there are those that would say you don't need good gear to be a good photographer. And then while that's true, um, at the end of the day, you need the right tool for the job. I mean, photography gear is, uh, is a tool just like anything else. Uh, you could liken it to carpentry. Um, if you give really high quality tools to someone unskilled, uh, they're not gonna produce very much. And uh, vice versa, if you have someone uh, who's very skilled but with really poor tools, they're gonna have a really hard time accomplishing what they wanna go out there and accomplish with it. So uh, without further ado, yeah, I'm gonna take the camera and show you guys around. Okay, so let's have a look around and hopefully I can give you some insight into film photography. The most common question I get is actually about the scanner I use, and this is it here. It's an Epson V600 scanner, and it's a flatbed scanner that will do 35 millimeter and medium format. It's about $200 and it's probably the best value out there right now. There are more expensive scanners that do a better job, but it's not significant. And I figure if I've got some frames that I really need high quality scans of, I can always take those into a professional lab and get them scanned. Uh, moving on to the cameras, I've already discussed them in some of my other videos. Uh, I've got the Zorky here, the Hasselblad, classic medium format camera. This one's actually loaded. You can tell at the back here there's uh, the white marking in the circle there denotes that there's film inside. So I don't think I've shot any of that roll yet. Um, down here couple range finders, some black and white Nikon filters, my Mamiya is the TLR, uh, Nikon prime lenses, really a big fan of prime lenses. They're usually optically superior to their zoom counterparts and while they're not as versatile, um, I find I get much better shots with them. It uh, forces you to move around a bit and yeah, I just generally have better luck. Uh, Nikon, SLRs, more Hasselblad backs. Actually, you can see these ones are empty. They've got the little red semicircle. The Mamiya 645, I haven't used it too much. It's got some mechanical issues that I need to work out. In the back's the Lomo spinner camera. I'll see if I can dig up some shots from, from that guy. It's pretty cool. And below, Pentax 67, a uh, great medium format camera. Probably my most used medium format camera. Uh, a little tip, it doesn't have a little uh, slot in the back to show which film it's got inside. So if you if you take a few days between uh, loading your film and shooting it, it's nice to actually cut off the box end, put it in the hot shoe, and it'll remind you what film you've got in there. Uh, my bulk loader, I've done a video on that. Uh, the light meter I'm using is the Sikonic light meter. It's pretty handy because it doesn't actually run on batteries. The, uh, the light itself provides the charge to run the meter. So really handy, never have to worry about batteries with that guy. Um, we got some dark slides here, four by five and eight by 10. You can see the, the huge difference in negative size there by just looking at the holders for them. Uh, the cameras themselves, my four by five and eight by 10. Um, because the Epson V600 doesn't actually scan large format. I haven't done too many scans of my large format work. I've done a lot of contact printing of the black and white and hopefully I can do a video of that shortly. I get a few questions about these cases too. These are Pelican cases which are waterproof. I believe they're even airtight cases that are super durable and they have foam inside that you can pluck out to any shape you like so they can accommodate cameras really well. A lot of photography stores sell them but you can usually find them for a cheaper price actually at like an outdoor store, so that's something to check out. Uh, the bag I'm using right now, it's actually a military style bag and it's really handy for me because right now I don't have a car, just a motorcycle, so I need to pack everything, like my 8x10, in this huge bag. And what's really nice is it actually has a rifle carrying system that I use for the tripod and it's uh, it works pretty slick. It can hold everything, including the camera and the holders and whatnot. Um, let's see what else. The fridge. Actually, let's have a look. Uh, this is my workstation here for those who have asked. Um, not too much to say about it. Dual monitors. Some people think it's a bit much, but uh, I don't know. I think it helps out a ton. It gives you a lot more real estate for working on um, photo editing or video editing. 
Um, my biggest tip would be to get two of the same monitor. It'll help you out a ton as far as calibration between the two. Yeah, the same same model and the same brand. Um, up on the shelf, I've got the four x five back or the um, the excuse me instant back for my four x five camera. The peel part insta film by Fuji. I've got some impossible project here too for the for the old Polaroid camera. Um, impossible project. There's a lot of people kind of hating on it, but honestly, I get that it's expensive, but I'd rather have an expensive option than no option at all. So, you know, I don't buy too much of it just because it is pricey, but I think it's worth it, and it's nice to support the guys that are bringing film back. Uh, yeah, SX70, classic folding camera. There's a Hasselblad pr prism back there, which is nice. Oh, another back too. Um, the computers, nothing too spiff. I built it. A little while ago, so it does the trick. I mean, Lightroom, Photoshop, that sort of thing for post processing. And really nice piece of kit here. I've showed it before. It's uh, made by Huion, I believe, and it's meant for um, like a, as a tracing table, but using it as a uh, light table for photography works really great. Here, let me turn it on. So it won't quite do it justice, but um, if you have film, especially slides, this thing looks awesome. And with a nice loop, you just get a ton of detail and you can really inspect your images. And to see this in person, the color is just amazing. It can't be, can't be duplicated quite as well by digital, but uh, yeah, it's really something. Actually, this image here of Yosemite. Oh, look. I recently printed this one, actually. I haven't had a chance to hang it up anywhere. That's it there. All right, so moving along, I'll show you guys the fridge. Um, not a lot of food, actually. It's mostly. Mostly film, to be honest. And yeah, there's some beer up there too. All right, let's let's take a look at the film. All right, so I'm not going to talk about every film I have in the fridge here, but I'm going to dig out a few, and we'll uh, hopefully I can show some pictures of some of the work I've done with each of them. All right, so here we've got F key. There's F key 50, F key 50. There's also F key 25. Now F key is not around anymore, but F key was, um, I think, been uh, produced by Photochemica in Croatia, and a really cool black and white film. Um, I've had some great results with it. Really low speed and and really nice contrast. Okay, also some Milford Pana 50. This stuff's easier to get a hold of. Uh, the F key is actually discontinued, so you can't really get it anymore. There's still lots of stashes out there, but uh, Ilford's still still producing film and probably the biggest black and white manufacturer out there. So this stuff's easy to get a hold of if you're looking for low speed black and white, and it gives really nice results as well. There's also other black and white choices, like uh, we've got Kodak Triax here, which is a really popular one, and uh, Fuji Acros or Acros. Still not sure how to say that, but uh, these guys are really nice options as well. Okay, so I've got a few canisters here. Let's see what's in them. Uh, Rolly Retro. It's classic black and white film. Um, I've shot it with it a little bit, but I'm still testing that guy out. And this is Rolly. We've got some color film in here. The Digibase CN and CR. The CN is the color negative and the CR is the color reversal. Um, 200 speed, which is unique. And uh, and I've got some cool results from those, those ones too. Uh, here we've got a Japan Camera Hunter case. And they're really handy for storing your, your film while traveling. Uh, Kodak T-Max. Uh, Portrait 400 Ultra Color. They don't make that anymore, but a cool film nonetheless. 
Uh, E100 VS, really nice film. Uh, very saturated slide film, really cool. And Kodak Ektar 100, one of my favorite films. Um, I think a lot of people would agree with me. It's a really nice, well-saturated color negative film and a lot of latitude. So if you do post-processing, you've got a lot of options after you scan it. Now here's one I actually haven't shot at all before. It's Ilford SFX. It's a near infrared or partially infrared film. So I haven't tried that out at all. I only have one roll and I'm looking forward to testing it out, but I've got to do a bit more research on filtration. Apparently you get your best results if you use um, red or orange filters with it, I believe, but looking forward to trying that one out. And here's another really cool film I haven't tried out yet. This is Adox. Um, I think it's CMS 20 or CMS 20 uh, version 2. This is a really low speed film. Uh, you can shoot it at 12 ISO or 20 ISO, so super low speed. And it actually comes with its own special developer, so you can get near grainless results. Um, I've seen some great examples. I haven't tried it myself yet, but I'm a sucker for, for brand new films, like really interesting films. So I really look forward to trying that one out. Uh, Kodak Ektachrome is a tungsten balanced film. Uh, another one I haven't shot. I don't know even where this came from. It looks very old, but that could produce some cool results. Um, with slide films, because they're not negative, you don't have that latitude of recolor balancing after you scan it. It's kind of what you see is what you get. So with the tungsten film, it's really nice for shooting indoors under tungsten lights. It will give you uh, proper whites and everything won't turn out orangey as if you had used a, a daylight balanced film. I've also got some Provia 400X in here. This is a slide film and again a discontinued film. It's, um, it's a higher speed slide film which is rare to see and it's uh, I've seen it used very well indoors but again another film I'm looking forward to trying out. I just haven't had a, a good chance to use it. It's kind of a weird film right because it's a higher speed but uh, slide film, usually you just want to give a ton of light to get a nice exposure. But it, uh, I've seen some really great results with that. I'm looking forward to trying that. Okay, so in the CRISPR, I've got a huge tray of film. Let's have a look. Uh, Rolly RPX is their new line of black and white. There's 400, I believe, 100, and also 25. Really cool stuff. Um, FP100C is the instant film. I shot a whole video um, doing portraits on the street with that, so have a look. Some old Kodak canisters here. Uh, we got Ilford. Uh, Cinestill, the new Cinestill 50. Uh, really interesting film. A, a cinema film with the Remjet backing removed, so you can have it processed normally. Some amazing results. That's a brand new film that's come out and uh, should give some really good results. Haven't tried it yet. And we've also got the Cinestill 800. Um, I've shot one roll of this, turned out really nice. Uh, it's an 800 speed film and it, and it just has a certain quality about it that's really quite amazing. Uh, I'd suggest checking it out. It's pretty cool. A brick of LVF 50 here, the classic. Another Japan Camera Hunter case. Portra. I believe that's also Portra. Ilford. Uh, some old Portra VC for vivid color. And Fuji Ekros. Oh, this stuff's great too. This stuff is really hard to get a hold of. They haven't made it for a while. This is Agfa Ultra 50, and it looks almost like a slide film, but it's a color negative film. I've had some really amazing results with that, and I've got two rolls left. Uh, boxes of Provia here. Provia 100F is a great slide film that's not super saturated. Asti has a slide film that they don't make anymore. Um, also not super saturated and, and really nice results. 
Velvia 50, again, a classic, uh, highly saturated, um, often used for landscape photography, really popular film. U100VS, again, very saturated, this time made by Kodak. Really enjoy this stuff too. Uh, Fuji Riala, it's been discontinued, but a nice neutral color negative film. Fuji Pro 400H, again, very nice uh, color negative film, fairly neutral. What do we got here? Fuji NPC 160. Um, I don't know what else to say. This is a, this is a nice one too. Again, a fairly fairly neutral uh, color negative film. Very easy to post process. Had some great results with that. In this case, it's 220. So as long as your camera accepts 220, you get double the amount of shots with a medium format roll. T Max. The box is actually empty. Toss it. Now let's see what else we've got here. Um, in the back, some Agfa, some Kodak EPP, uh, old Ektachrom. That's kind of cool. Some more Ektar, some more T Max, Velvia, Cinestill. Uh, Adox Color Implosion. I believe it's Adox, that makes sense. This is a relatively new film. It's uh, pretty experimental. It's got uh, apparently imploding colors, bursting reds, and toxic grain. I've shot one roll of it, but was a little disappointed, so I'm gonna give it a try again, but uh, I probably shouldn't have used it for portrait work. It's not the most flattering. I'd probably use it for something more experimental. I think this bag here is just a mishmash of Lomo films, the Lomo Color films, Lomo Red Scale, Lomo X Pro, uh, some pretty cool films. So these are all my 35mm and uh, medium format films. I've also got some large format stuff in here. I always try to keep, just because they're a pain to load, I always try to keep a few magazines in the fridge loaded. Um, I label the magazines like with the phonetic alphabet, like the film holders called Bravo or Charlie, and then I name the side one or two. And then I have a master list that I just keep so I remember what's in each holder. Just because you can't open it up and see if there's film inside, or see even what type of film inside. Um, it's possible to you know shoot something and then be like is it black and white or is it color? I can't remember and then you don't even know how to develop it So yeah, I keep a, a variety of 4x5 uh, Magazines loaded with a bit of color a bit of black and white and a bit of slide and the films I'm using I'm using uh, Trix film for for a lot of it. I've got a, a 50 pack here I'm not sure why, but Trax is usually 400, but in 4x5 they rate it at 320. Uh, either way, this stuff pushes really well too. I've shot it at 1600 and, and 800. Uh, slide film, E100VS, I've talked about it. Super saturated, really nice stuff. Portra 400. Probably my favorite, Ektar 100. Just a, a great film. Fuji Acros 100, Fortune 160, Wilford HP 5 Plus, and some Kodak T Max here. This stuff is uh, is really weird developing it. It uh, comes out blue, like there's a there's a blue backing, and I find uh, a lot of the time I have to like re rinse it. So I don't use it as much just because it's a hassle. But yeah, I've had some really great results. It's just a bit more work. So unfortunately, like I said before, the Epson V600 doesn't do scans for large format. So in the past, I've actually gone to my local university and used their scanner, but I don't live close by anymore. So unfortunately, yeah, I can't show you too many examples of the films here. And last but not least, uh, the 8x10 large format, which just dwarfs everything. I've got only two, two stacks here. I've got Ilford HP5 Plus 400. It's the black and white film of choice. 
with 8x10, uh, a lot of the times you need that extra speed, and sometimes I even push this to 800 or, or 1600. I've almost shot through this whole 25 stack. I've been doing just tons of contact prints. And then Ektar 100 uh, in 8x10. I haven't even shot a single sheet of this. I'm just super intimidated by it. Uh, these guys, it's about 100 bucks for 25 shots. So you're looking at four bucks a shot. With this guy, it's about 15 bucks a shot. It's about $150 for 10 shots. So you really raise the stakes here. I'm saving it for something special, but uh, yeah, when I come up with something, I'll be sure to show you guys. Anyways, that's my film collection, and uh, that's kind of a tour of the setup I got here. If you've got any questions, uh, let me know in the comments, and hopefully see you guys next time.